Hi, welcome to video lectures. I am Karna Majit Narayan Rao, Assistant Professor, Vijayanagara College, Hospete. And the topic is on Hooke's Law. In our last class, we have discussed about the concept of stress. Now we shall discuss what is strain. The strain is defined as the change in dimension or shape of the body due to the deforming force is called as a strain. It is measured by the ratio of change in dimension to the original dimension. And the strain is nothing but the change in dimension to the original dimension. Since strain is a ratio of two similar quantities, it is a pure number and has no unit and no dimensions. And the different types of strain are longitudinal strain, volume strain and shearing strain. Longitudinal strain is defined as the deforming force which produces the change in length only. Then the strain is called longitudinal strain. Longitudinal strain is given by change in length to the original length that is equal to small l by capital L. The volume strain is defined as the deforming force which produces the change in volume only. Then the strain is called volume strain. Volume strain is given by change in volume to the original volume that is equal to small v by capital V and the shearing strain. If the deforming force which produces the change in shape of the body only, then the strain is called shearing strain. Shearing strain is nothing but tan theta that is equal to small l by capital L. Now we shall find out what is an elastic limit. The maximum stress from which an elastic body will recover from its original state after removal of the deforming force is called elastic limit. The elastic limit differs widely for different substances and it is high for a substance like steel and low for a substance like lead. Now we shall find out what is Hooke's law. Hooke's law states that within the elastic limit strain is directly proportional to stress that is strain is proportional to strength within the elastic limit that is equal to stress by strain is a constant. And this constant is called as modulus of elasticity or elastic constant or coefficient of elasticity. Since strain has no unit, therefore the modulus of elasticity has the same unit as that of stress that is expressed in Newton per meter square. However, when we plot a graph of the strain versus stress, the nature of the graph will be a straight line. If the nature of the graph is a straight line which verifies the Hooke's law. In other words, the strain is directly proportional to stress within the elastic limit. Hence, the Hooke's law is verified. And there are different types of moduli of elasticity. The different moduli of elasticity are Young's modulus, bulk modulus, and rigidity modulus. Young's modulus is represented by Y, bulk modulus represented by K and bulk rigidity modulus by N. The Young's modulus is defined as longitudinal stress to the longitudinal strain. Bulk modulus is defined as volume stress to the volume strain and rigidity modulus is defined as shearing stress to the shearing strain. However, the Poisson's ratio, which is represented as sigma, is defined as lateral strain to the longitudinal strain. Now we shall find out what is Young's modulus of elasticity. Now when I consider a wire, as you are observing in the figure, when I consider a wire which is fixed at one end and weight is suspended from the free end as shown in figure, then when they were the longitudinal stress, there will be a longitudinal strain in the wire. That means on account of the force, there will be an increase in the length of the wire. As the length increases, the area of cross section of the wire goes on decreases. That means the ratio of stress to the strain 
within the elastic limit is called as its Young's modulus of elasticity represented by y. If f is the downward force on the wire that is represented as shown in figure and if a is the area of cross section of the wire and capital L is the length of the wire and small l is the change in length of the wire produced by the, uh, by the applied force then longitudinal stress is defined as the force divided by area. Longitudinal strain is given by small l divided by capital L. Therefore, the Young's modulus y is equal to stress divided by strain that is equal to f divided by a whole divided by small l by capital L that is equal to capital F into L divided by A into small L. The dimensional formula of Young's modulus is given by M L to the power of minus 1 T to the power of minus 2. However, the SI unit of the Young's modulus is given by Newton per meter square. Now we shall have a glance of the load extension curve. The figure shows a metallic wire of length L. You are observing in the figure. And if A is the area of cross section of the wire, when we increase the applied force while observing the change in the length of the wire, that means as the load goes on increases, the, there will be a continuous change in the length of the wire we notice. That we can observe the following phenomenon. That means as we increase the applied load from 0 to F1, the wire stretches uniformly and obeys Hooke's law that it is represented by the straight line and is represented by OA on the graph where A is called as elastic limit of the material of the wire and F is the force. That means on account of the removal of the force, the wire may return back to its original position. That means it will come back to its original length. And after the force which when being increased from F1 to F2, that means if the force is greater than F1 but less than F2, the wire loses some of its elastic properties and does not quite come back to its original position when the external forces are being removed. However, the permanent deformation will not be there. But the B is called as yield point of the material of the wire. But we must keep this applied force below the, always we must keep the applied force below the yield point. If you raise the applied force beyond F2, the wire goes on increases until we reach the point C. So it is situated at the top of the curve and is called as the ultimate strength. Beyond the point C, even a small force which when being applied may continue to stretch the wire until it breaks. In other words, if F1 is the force, L1 is the length and A is called as its elastic limit. And the elastic limit is given by L1 F1 divided by A. And the, whenever the force is F2, the length is L2 and B is called yield point. And yield strength is given by F2 divided by A. If F3 is the force, L3 is the length and C is called ultimate strength. The ultimate strength is given by F3 divided by A. And the percentage elongation of the wire is given by L3 divided by L into 100. If A is the area of cross section of the wire, then we can notice the following observation. That as the material changes, the yield strength, ultimate strength and the percentage elongation changes for different materials such as pure aluminium and that of annealed copper and a hard drawn copper and steel. And it is easy to understand why aluminium conductors used in the transmission lines must be reinforced with the steel wire but aluminium alone does not have the strength to support itself over a long spans. Thank you.